So Peter, what is this project that we're doing? Well, Instrumentals is a piece that Arthur Russell wrote 40 years ago. And um, Arthur Russell is a composer, songwriter, producer, um, a dear friend of each of ours who uh, died of AIDS in 1992. Uh, very prolific artist. Uh, his music really spanned the range from disco music to, uh, uh, to, so to songs, to concert music, uh, and uh, f folk music as well. He's really a multifaceted artist. Uh, this particular piece was really a tribute, uh, I think, which, among other things, uh, to the form of the pop instrumental. Uh, I think you find in, uh, you know, over, over the years of every, every year or so, there are a couple of songs which uh, reach the charts, which don't have words, that are just instrumental uh, pieces. So that's, uh, this was Arthur's, uh, I think Arthur's homage to that form. Um, and uh, all of us, performed in, uh, first performed this piece in 1975. Not only did we come together with Arthur to play this piece, but uh, also I think it was doing this piece that, for example, I first met Ernie, and um, the nature of the work is that it is uh, constructed modularly. Uh, there are different sections which are then uh, repeated, and as they're repeated, um, Ar Arthur would provide the harmony and the rhythm and the melodies, and then it's really, that that's the basic form structure of the piece, but what is as important uh, as well is that each of us and each of the musicians performing this music, uh, we're, we're relating to the score, we're channeling this, but also each of us brings our own our own lives, our own history, our own personality. And uh, this was a very, very special time in New York. Uh, all of us were living in a, uh, living or working in an area of Manhattan called Soho in the East Village. And uh, we were a group of artists, uh, musicians, choreographers, all working in, in this um, hotbed a place where people went, uh, where society went to dream, if you like. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then it was very difficult for composers to get their music performed. Uh, so all of us uh, are, were musicians back then, uh, Peter Zumo and Ernie Brooks and myself, Reese Chatham and, and Peter Gordon and Arthur Russell. And uh, we all exchanged services. Uh, so we, Arthur would play in Peter's band, the Love of Life Orchestra, and we'd play in Arthur's band, and that's how we all got to meet each other, meet each other, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, I first met you. You and Arthur were roommates. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. we were roommates on. He Street. came to the last show of the Modern Lovers, which was a band from Boston, and I was in, and that's actually how I moved. Back. I was from New York, but I moved back to New York to work with Arthur, in fact, and I ended up sleeping on the floor of the kitchen and his rehearsal studio in Westbeth because I didn't have an apartment yet until I found the loft in Queens. But I remember the kitchen was, mm -hmm. a, was a very important place where Steve Reich would play, Philip Glass would play. I remember playing with Laurie Anderson with uh, in one thing with Arthur on cello. And, you know, what it, it was sort of the first concerts a lot of, the, of a lot of these important people happened at this place. It was on the corner of Broome Mercer Streets. It and still exists, but in a different location. And it's really about co community because, uh, you know, Arthur and Ernie had uh, uh, their band Flying Hearts, and Ernie and Arthur would write songs together. Um, uh, 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 Peter, as a composer, would, uh, Peter, Z uh, Peter Zumo, would, uh, Arthur would be playing in, in Peter's music. And so it's really, uh, 
music is very much uh, a social endeavor, and um, it's sort of it's, it's like having a an ongoing conversation, and uh, so uh, the uh, the mu music connects to society in a sense like. Uh, say from the inside to the outside, people come to it, but at the same time, just an, uns an ensemble is a social organization in itself. And in creating a piece, in creating an ensemble, it's like you're creating different uh, communal microcosms. And, and speaking of, of things social, uh, Peter Zumo, how did you meet Arthur? I'm not sure, it could have been a, a basement at West Beth rehearsal with mm -hmm. Peter Gordon. Peter was trying to put a big band together and there were people, but if that was the case, Arthur maybe heard me play and he was down, I had a loft on 22nd Street in what's now Chelsea. And he was, I was on the third floor and he was on the sidewalk yelling up for me. But I had headphones on, so I didn't hear him. <laughs> and after a few days, I heard him, and he'd call up and say, "I want you to, you know, I want you to come." So we got. And he found me, and that was the the interesting thing about Arthur. He was lurking in the back of the Modern Lovers concert, and he went up to Ernie and said, "I have these songs. I want to show you these songs." And he found me, and he found you, and we we found each other. But it, it's interesting that, uh, and we were fortunate that in nineteen, let's say seventy five. There, were, there was an order of magnitude less young artists in New York than there are today. So it was easier for us to find each other downtown. And we came from different places, maybe university, where we had been exposed to new music. We had these ideas, we'd been listening to pop music and jazz and uh, studying electronic music and uh, serious contemporary composition. And it was just natural to, to say, this is what we're doing, we're going to do this. You have music, I'm going to play it, and here we are. And Peter, wasn't it a real trip when we first got together to do this 40 years later? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, it, for us, it, it was such an, an emotional experience because uh, we had gotten together for the first time in many years to play this music. and. Uh, Peter, I don't think we've seen each other in at least five years, or perhaps like uh, more, 15 more, years. More. Where does the time go? Uh, and all of a sudden we were playing uh, this music together. It brought back such good memories. And I think it was a chance to finally really get it down, because yeah. in we, 75 we never got to rehearse it enough. Yeah. And Arthur would be playing, and he would get lost in the music, and he wouldn't make the signal at all clearly. And everything would just go completely. I think he was a fan of chaos. And yes, part of that was, I don't know if it was intentional, but he didn't mind when it happened. But it's a sort of music which kind of grows. It takes a while to learn this piece. And it's really, it's been a really privilege to have this opportunity. You know, we've just done, uh, this is our eighth concert in nine days. And, uh, and music grows through playing it. And so it's really, I think this is really the first time that uh, that any of us have really been able to get deeper than just the surface level on this on this piece. And uh, I know even over the course of this tour, I mean, I'm there on stage, and each each at every single performance, I'm just like, I don't know, I'm just thrilled because I'm discovering new things in each one of the sections and it's it's uh the music keeps on keeps on keeps on growing so peter how does this when i first came into the uh, rehearsal i played this music uh, a long time ago i think the last time i played it was in 1992 and the first thing i asked uh, peter gordon was uh so peter what is this music how do we play it because i had forgotten it's there's, it's very particular this score and the uh, yeah. and the way it works. Yeah. It, it helps if it's. <laughs> how yeah, that was the problem. <laughs> we it's a binary, all those years. It's a binary structure where we have a melody with um, uh, accompanying lines and some chord uh, patterns, and a part two, 
which is a compressed or stretched version of part one, where the time values are made uh, odd. And, and, and but, 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 even, but even before that, I mean, this is um, when Arthur originally composed this piece, he had a whole series of, of graphs. There were about 40 pages of, you know, many, many lines, which then he would link together with, with colored pencils and create these connections between melodies, what he considered a, the primary melody, and then sort of the secondary melody, and then the chord changes. And the, in the original version, the original in intention is that it, it was one long, continuous piece without repeats. And then uh, the, the original idea is that the musicians, we'd all play through this piece, and then we would uh, have a discussion of what sections we uh, would, as a group collectively, would like to focus on. And uh, it was sort of very much of a uh, uh, communal and a, a democratic process. Uh, then Arthur sort of soon realized that if you really stayed true to this sort of democratic way of putting together form, it would never get beyond the rehearsal stage. Mm -hmm. So then uh, Arthur did a second uh, uh, pass of these in which, uh, based on sort of ideas of consensus of these sections, he would create these, uh, these different pages, who often would have a part one or part two, and uh, then so when we would come into it, basically we would repeat part one for a while, then we'd bring in the second part and repeat part one or one and two, and then there'd be certain sections within those which we would um, uh, start repeating uh, and, and start adding more more things to it. And it, it still is democratic uh, in the sense uh, for this per score, for example, uh, we have certain prescribed things to play, certain prescribed things to do uh, with, uh, as Peter Zuma was saying, with uh, uh, prescribed chord changes and specific melodies to play. But then we can start to express our own individuality mm -hmm. uh, within the context of these chord structures. You know, and Peter Zuma will start playing the trombone. Might, he might be doing a solo or, or he, he might decide to play um, uh, 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 the harmony in relation to what Peter uh, Gordon is doing on saxophone or I'm doing on flute. Uh, Ernie working with the bass. Uh, so we're all listening to each other very, very carefully. Uh, and, uh, and because of this, each of the performances is slightly different. With, yeah. And with Peter conducting and telling us, okay, it's time to move from one section to, uh, to the next. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a conductor. I'm sort of more like the traffic cop, uh, you know, d directing the traffic. It's, you know, okay, let's just, it helps sort of, us together to you know to move on from section uh, to section. One of the things that we've added in this reading, in this interpretation of the piece, is that we uh, what didn't really exist in the in the original is that we've sort of created these transitional sections that go from between the piece, sort of to help us both prepare and then also to sort of come out from one to one section to the other, and those are very, uh, uh, very open in, in in a certain way, which is very much uh, in keeping of the spirit of the piece. Uh, at the same time, it's a way for us to sort of regroup, uh, find where we are, explore a certain space, and then we would move on to say another page and go into that page and follow very strict structure. And it's it's actually it's 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 it it seems like a simple piece, but it's actually very complex because there are uh, things happening melodically as well as happening in terms of rhythm. So in uh, some of the sections, it's a uh, you know it uh, there are 
measures that are in uh, in th in three or in or in seven. One two three four. One two three. One two three four. One two three. Or we do it in five. One two three. One two. One two three. One two. Then we go back to four. One one two. One two. One two. One two. So there are these different uh, uh, through these different meters. It's there's it's always like kind of shifting where the beginning is. Uh, so and it's uh, it's 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 almost like it's almost like a a mantra in meditation where you know we're focusing very clear on very specific aspects mm -hmm. but but by that focus it really opens us up to divine inspiration and each of speaking of divine inspiration uh, each of the performances is different uh, sometimes we will we just get so much into it that we go on for two hours, like like we did last night, and uh, and for the performance here, uh, the audience was so warm uh, that that uh, uh, Peter Zuma and I couldn't contain ourselves. We just spontaneously broke out into dance, and uh, the audience was yeah. dancing, and everyone was clapping. And we had such a good time at this performance, didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not only the composition allows, requires us, obliges us to zone in on the information here, and yet allows us to have freedoms, but also the conductor is, is helping us zone in, but also have these freedoms. And Reese, you say democracy. So how does that really vote today. What was our vote for today? No, our vote, when we vote, go to the election and we vote and we're participating in democracy. And we're experiencing here through this music from 1975, the, the relationship of obligation to individual freedom. What has happened in society? Because we're talking about us in the 70s exploring the idea of bringing uh, the social unit, the ensemble together, bringing diverse people with diverse backgrounds together to make a music, which Arthur was brilliant at uh, coordinating through composition. And uh, what has happened? Well, that's a big question, Peter. Well, Thank think, you. Well, I, th I, 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 I do we want to get it? I mean, no, I think what's happened to the, the democracy in the United States? Well, I'm world. talking about the United States, for I mean, example. Well, no, I think or France. France. The problem France. is money and inequality, and that's had it, a bad effect on many things. But the thing, what art, what can happen in art, is art is one of the areas where you can actually create the model of a perfect world, and and if you mess up, it doesn't make things worse. You know, you could. You're allowed to make stay, uh, mistakes. Other people, like politicians, and we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we all politicians. They try to create a perfect world, and usually they make things worse. But uh, this is really, I think. Uh, I'm not, I mean, I'll get very serious now, but I think this is very essential for the survival of humanity and the survival of our planet. Is to find a way for people. Uh, all sorts of people coming from diverse backgrounds and to come together with a common purpose, retaining their, their, everyone's individual history and working respectfully and hearing different voices, uh, you know, all coming, you know. All, and doing this without fear. And doing this without fear. And it's a matter of people, you know, finding a way. And we all have to find a way. Uh, to work, to work together, but it has a common become, purpose. I agree completely, but it's become increasingly difficult to place. Well, that's why work because I went to this big meeting at uh, PS One, and all the public officials were there, and the head of the cultural affairs for New York, and all these artists were saying, "We're losing our place. We're losing our place to work, our place to live. What can we do?" And they tear down. There's a place called Five Points, which was this beautiful graffiti, an old building that that artists had taken over and covered and All the politicians said, we will never let that be destroyed. And, and two months later, they whitewashed it and then tore it down. 
Yeah. And, and, the, and this is something where it's sad that, you know, the, as far as I'm concerned, the left and political movements in the United States are really in disarray. And so the this is the other side of the whole The vibe the here side. at the festival, Bob Bon Kilby, is certainly uh, like energizing for that. us in terms of, you know, the people coming to this place in, uh, in the farm in Switzerland, or wherever we are, it's beautiful. The thing about it It'll is give us that oxygen it, to go back and it's, fight it's, it's, you know, it's I noticed that this festival is that it's relaxed. Uh, there, there are not like tons and tons of people and you feel you're going to be it, stampeded. It say on that uh, it's just relaxed, it's in the country, and I think that came out in the, in the music. That yeah, we for example, you know, the other, um, the other day um, we were playing at another festival, I mean, uh, uh, which shall remain nameless. Which shall remain nameless, I mean, which was a wonderful festival, uh, you know, great music, but everywhere you looked, there was an advertisement for something. Branding was branding paramount. was you know, and you and you you know, and you, you hear that like brand. you know <laughs> and, that brand. And you you hear things and that, that idea of the brand, you hear young artists saying, Well, I have to create a brand. Well a brand is maybe appropriate for cattle because uh, you know, a brand is when they take the hot thing and they Put the cattle, and that shows ownership. It's done here. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you can keep your brand. This is you the want. family shirt. Sure. Yeah. But uh, you know, this is not uh, this is not corporate music. We're not mm -hmm. selling anything. We're there's no there's no record. I mean, there's no product. We're not selling a product right now. This really comes from love of the music, and uh, and that's that's really. You know what it what it's about, and it's really hard uh, to survive, and get through all of this because uh, you know, and it's not just not just the United States, but all over. I mean, nations are are no longer important. It's the it's the corporations which seem to be driving things, and uh, and this you know, and this is very much I think akin to the. Uh, slow food movement uh, to like really uh, people you know working in you know artisanal uh, creations whether it's in food or manufacturing and it's really you know trying trying to have music art and soft society really coming from the from the people from the community it's not like you know some person coming in and saying, "Yeah, hey, I can make money on this." You know, it's um, you know we're really pleased to do it, and it's nice to get paid, you know, to do this because you know we're musicians, we're workers, and uh, you know workers should get you know paid for their labor. But that's but that's not the main idea of this music. This 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 the idea of this music is really to allow individual voices to be heard but in the context of working to, together in a, uh, uh, in a, in a uh, collective uh, shared purpose. But you have to admit, Peter, it's also very nice to be doing this in the country. Oh yeah? In the country? I mean out here yeah, in the country? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean it's, it's nice to do it anywhere too. I mean, it's like, and that's the thing. This is music. We could do it in the country. We could do it in the city. You know, we could do it if we're, you know, on an airplane. I mean, it's, uh, and in each time, each way we do it, we would be, uh, it's open enough that it can bring in the special experience of wherever we are and the people that we're with. And, and this, is, this is very, Arthur is, was very generous in this music to create a way for people to come together. So thank you very much for having Do us. You want to, we really appreciate coming and, and being a part of this festival. Do, well, we could, we, could, we could sing a little bit. One.